This module is an overview that will provide information on what high leverage practices are, why they are important to understand, and where you can find additional support and resources to learn to implement these practices in your classroom. Welcome to the Kentucky Avery module on high leverage practices. My name is Dee Dee Newburn and I'm the Fayette County Schools Safe School Specialist and District PBIS Coordinator. We encourage you to print out the guided notes that accompany this module, pause this video, and take the brief three item quiz before proceeding further. Educators often hear the term evidence-based practices. We know that these practices are those that have been proven by research to be particularly effective in supporting student learning and behavior, particularly the learning and behavior of students with disabilities. There is another set of practices called high leverage practices, which when used hand in hand with evidence-based practices can impact the learning and behavior of all students. This module will explain what these high leverage practices are and why as education stakeholders, we should utilize them in our classrooms and schools. High leverage practices and evidence-based practices are not mutually exclusive. They can be used together to meet the needs of all students in every classroom and can be easily embedded into a multi-tiered system of support. High leverage practices have been described as critical practices educators use to impact student learning and behavior across all content areas and grade levels. There are two sets of these practices, one designed with general educators in mind and the other for special educators. We will introduce both sets of practices in this module. Evidence-based practices are more focused practices that have been proven by research to impact learning and behavior in specific content areas and at specific developmental levels. Most importantly, these practices can be learned and practiced by pre-service and in-service educators, and your KY Avery team is here to help. The answer to question number one on your guided notes is false. Although there is overlap between the two types of practices, they are different. The term high leverage practices may be new to you, but the concept of good teaching is not. And that is what we are talking about. High leverage practices were first discussed in relation to general education. Researchers from the University of Michigan, including Deborah Ball, reviewed hundreds of teaching practices in an effort to find the practices that were critical to helping students learn content. They eventually settled on 19 practices that they called high leverage practices. Please note that we have included the link to the Teaching Works website from the University of Michigan, where you can locate more specific information on each of these high leverage practices. The link is found in this module. For now, let's highlight a few of those 19 practices. Practice number two is explaining and modeling content, practices, and strategies. As an example of a special education high leverage practice that dovetails nicely with this practice is use explicit instruction. Both of these practices are fundamentally about intentionally and thoughtfully providing access to the skills, processes and practices that may otherwise remain hidden to some students. This brings us to question number two on your guided notes. The answer to this question is true. Although the practices were not developed with the intention of correspondence, many of the practices overlap with each other. Practice number 13 is setting long and short-term learning goals for students. When you explore the Teaching Works website, you will find resource guides with activities for teaching a particular high leverage practice. Resource guides are being developed for science, mathematics, social studies, English, language arts, and general for every high leverage practice developed. 
Another example of a specific general education high leverage practice is practice number 18, providing oral and written feedback to students. Feedback is a critical component of effective instruction, and we have several modules and other series highlighting ways to provide effective feedback. We encourage you to spend some time browsing the additional resources at cybers.com. After the Teaching Works High Leverage Practices were identified, the Council for Exceptional Children, in collaboration with special education researchers, identified a targeted set of 22 high leverage practices for special educators. There is overlap between the general education high leverage practices and the special education high leverage practices. This overlap makes sense because high leverage practices at their core are about effective teaching. These 22 practices are divided into four categories, and as you will see, overlap nicely with the practices already identified by the Teaching Work team. The four categories are collaboration, assessment, social-emotional behavior practices, and instruction. The first category is collaboration. The practices which fall under this category are collaborate with professionals to increase student success. Organize and facilitate effective meetings with professionals and families. And collaborate with families to support student learning and secure needed services. The second category is assessment. Here you see the three practices which fall under this category. You can learn more about each of these practices by exploring the resources links in this module. For example, the link below to the Cedar Center at the University of Florida allows you to download a free copy of the book entitled High Leverage Practices in Special Education. The third category is social, emotional, and behavioral practices and include establishing a consistent, organized, and respectful learning environment, provide positive and constructive feedback to guide students' learning and behavior, teach social behaviors, and conduct functional behavioral assessments to develop individual student behavior support plans. The final category is instruction. Here you see the many practices which fall under this category. Example, special education high leverage practices in the area of instruction including identifying and prioritizing long and short-term learning goals, providing scaffolded supports, and using explicit instruction. Take a minute to pause this video and review the other practices found on this slide. One very helpful tool being developed for the special education high leverage practices is a video series that includes an introduction and definition of each practice, brief review of the research, and several videos of general and special education teachers implementing the practice. You will find a link to these videos in the resource section of this module. The work of teaching is important. Mastering these high leverage practices is important. So co in collaboration with the Kentucky Department of Education, the Kentucky Excellence and Educator Preparation Team has identified six key high leverage practices education stakeholders can focus on to begin their work toward meeting the needs of all of Kentucky students. The six practices are explaining and modeling content, practices, and strategies, eliciting and interpreting individual students' thinking, specifying and reinforcing productive student behavior, setting long and short-term goals for students, providing oral and written feedback to students, analyzing instruction for the purpose of improving it. The Kentucky Avery team, along with the schools and university educator preparation programs, are working together to ensure that high leverage practices are used in Kentucky. This brings us to item number three on the quiz, which is true. Thank you for your time and please explore the resources in this module as they will get you started on a path to mastering these high leverage practices.